Hi and welcome back to Free Science Lessons. By the end of this video, you should be able to describe what's meant by active transport. You should then be able to describe the role of ATP in active transport. Now I should just point out that there are two types of active transport. These are called direct active transport and co-transport. In this video, we're looking at direct active transport, and in the next video, we look at co-transport. In the last few videos, we've been looking at how substances pass through cell membranes. We saw that many molecules cross the cell membrane by diffusion. Remember that diffusion is the net or overall movement of particles from a region of higher concentration to a region of lower concentration. In other words, down the concentration gradient. So in the example I'm showing you here, we've got a large concentration of oxygen molecules outside the cell and a lower concentration of oxygen molecules inside the cell. This means that oxygen molecules will diffuse down the concentration gradient into the cell. Now a key feature of diffusion is that it's a passive process. What that means is that diffusion does not require metabolic energy to take place. And remember that metabolic energy is the energy released by respiration. We saw that uncharged molecules such as oxygen can diffuse rapidly across the cell membrane. However, because the cell membrane contains a hydrophobic fatty acid core, polar molecules and ions cannot easily pass through. So in this case, they move across via protein channels or carrier proteins, and scientists call this process facilitated diffusion. You need to remember that even though facilitated diffusion uses proteins, chemicals still diffuse down the concentration gradient. And just like simple diffusion, facilitated diffusion is also a passive process. Okay, now diffusion cannot always be used to transport substances, and I'm showing an example here. This cell has a large concentration of calcium ions outside and a much lower concentration of calcium ions inside. Now this is actually typical for most animal cells. Generally the concentration of calcium ions is thousands of times lower inside the cell than outside. That's because calcium ions play a role in cell signaling and we'll see examples of that later in the course. So cells are constantly transferring calcium ions from the cytoplasm to outside the cell. Now in this case, the calcium ions are moving from a region with a lower concentration to a region with a higher concentration. So clearly this cannot take place by diffusion. Instead, cells use a process called active transport. In active transport, carrier proteins in the membrane transport a chemical from a region of lower concentration to a region of higher concentration. In other words, against the concentration gradient. Active transport requires metabolic energy, which is provided by the molecule ATP. Active transport is used to move lots of different molecules and ions, both into the cell and out of the cell, but always against the concentration gradient. Okay, so how does active transport work? During active transport, the molecular ion to be transported attaches to a receptor site on the carrier protein. This takes place on the side of the membrane where the chemical is at a lower concentration. The molecule of ATP then binds to the carrier protein. Next, the ATP molecule undergoes hydrolysis producing phosphate and a molecule of ADP. The phosphate attaches to the carrier protein and causes it to change shape. This shape change causes the carrier protein to transport the molecule or ion to the other side of the membrane where it's released. The phosphate now leaves the carrier protein, causing it to return to its previous shape. The ADP and phosphate will later reform ATP during respiration. Now there are a couple of points about active transport that you need to remember. Firstly, active transport uses a lot of ATP, so we often find lots of mitochondria in cells which carry out a lot of active transport. Secondly, the carrier proteins used in active transport are specific, so each carrier protein will only transport one type of molecule or ion. Now it's really important that you don't get confused between active transport and facilitated diffusion. Firstly, the carrier proteins are different between the two processes. Remember that active transport moves chemicals against the concentration gradient and is an active process, requiring metabolic energy. However, in facilitated diffusion, chemicals move down the concentration gradient, and facilitated diffusion is a passive process. In the next video, we look at co-transport. 